great. Yeah. So we're marking time, and you guys. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. The act consists of the last post played by Bugle. 21 gun salute fired by the 7th Toronto Regiment. Two minutes of silence. The layman played by a piper. The rouse played by a Bugle. L'acte souvenir comprend la dernière sonnerie. Deux minutes de silence suivi par l'élégie. Et l'appel au clair. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the platform party. I would ask for everyone to remain standing for the act of remembrance. At two minutes to the hour, the act will commence. À précisément 10h58 sera le commencement de l'acte souvenir.
Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, je vous présente l'honorable Dalton McEntee, Premier ministre de l'Ontario. I call upon the Honorable Dalton McEntee, Premier of Ontario, to the podium. Premier. Please be seated, everyone. General Romer, and if I may, I want to take this opportunity outset to say that during the course of the past nine years, when I've had the good fortune and great honor of serving Ontarians as a Premier, General Romer has proven throughout to be a wonderful friend, a mentor, an inspiration, and a powerful champion for our veterans. And on behalf of 13 million Ontarians, General, I thank you so much for that. General Lavoie, it's good to have you here with us. It's good to see one of our native sons do so well. He's simply the great responsibility of leading the Canadian forces here in our great province. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends. Merci de prendre part à notre cérémonie du jour du souvenir à Queen's Park. J'aimerais tout particulièrement souhaiter la bienvenue aux anciens combattants qui sont avec nous aujourd'hui. Thank you all for taking part in our Queen's Park Remembrance Day ceremony. And I want to extend a special welcome to our veterans for being with us today. We are all honored to share this occasion with you, our veterans, as you gather for three purposes to fulfill a silent promise made to fallen comrades, to represent fellow veterans no longer with us, and to stand in solidarity with returning veterans. We stand with you in honoring, remembering, and supporting all those who put themselves in harm's way to protect us, and all those who serve in the Canadian forces today. More than one and a half million Canadians served during times of war over the past century defeating tyranny in Europe and the Pacific, and taking a stand for freedom in places like Korea, Libya, and Afghanistan. More than 110,000 made the ultimate sacrifice. When our country needed them, when duty called, when others were threatened, ils ont délaissé la sécurité et le confort de notre magnifique province pour aller se battre dans des tranchées glaciales et boueuses. Canadian soldiers left the safety and comfort of our beautiful province and fought in cold, muddy trenches, faced horrifying gas attacks, overcame exploding bombs and frontal assaults, fought in the chaos of an air battle, weathered dangerous, unforgiving seas, endured ill health and mental illness, and feared improvised explosives right around the bend. After enduring so much, those who returned home use one word most often to describe themselves, lucky. They say, I was just one of the lucky ones. That self-description speaks to the humility of our veterans and it speaks to their memories. Et se souvient de ceux qui sont tombés au champ d'honneur. Les historiens parlent de pertes humaines. Ils préfèrent les appeler des amis. Our veterans knew those who fell. Historians call them casualties. Our veterans call them friend. They can tell you where they grew up, what they wanted to be, who they loved, what made them laugh, and how they died. They saw the tragedy of death so very far from home. Never again seeing your country, your community, your family. You know, not far from here, there's a list of such courageous men. At the University of Toronto's Heart House, there's a memorial called Soldier's Tower. At the base, there's an arc that you can walk through. The names of alumni who died in the Second World War are etched in stone there. 
Students today pass through Soldier's Tower all the time, hurrying to class, hurrying to reach their dreams. But if you take the time to look up, you'll see the names of students who died as young soldiers, and you can read this inscription. Their story is not graven only on stone over this, their native earth, but lives on far away, without visible symbol, woven into the stuff of other men's lives. My friends, those men and what they did for us are now part of us. It's in all we do and all we seek to become. The sacrifice, the barour, and the heroism of our ancient combatants and our heroes dead in service are embedded in our lives of every day and in the lives of millions of people in the world entire. The sacrifice, valor, and heroism of our veterans and fallen heroes is woven into the stuff of all our lives and the lives of millions more around the world who today live in peace and safety, with opportunity and prosperity, with the bonds of community and the joy of family. We will never forget our veterans and our fallen heroes. We will never forget all that they gave, all that we owe, and all that we have. We will prove ourselves worthy of our rich inheritance. We will champion peace and freedom here at home and wherever we are called to serve. We will do these things out of love for our children. And we will do them because there is simply no better way to remember our fallen and honor their sacrifice. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite Brigadier General Omer Lavoie, Commander of Land Force Central Area and Joint Task Force Central to deliver his remarks. Premier, Mr. Bagenti, Mr. Wallace, Mr. General Romer, Mr. Hoskins, Deputy Minister, Mr. Chekaway, Councillor Carroll, Councils General, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, veterans. A great privilege and honor to be here this morning to represent the Canadian Forces. Looking at these uh, brave men, our veterans, World War II and Korea sitting in the front row, I made the decision there a few moments ago that instead of reading off the script, I'm going to talk from the heart and make a personal connection there. So, as a former, as an infantry officer and a former commander in Afghanistan, uh, during a pretty rough time, uh, where I lost 140 soldiers wounded and I had 19 soldiers killed in action, including my regimental sergeant major. And on those occasions when I lost soldiers, it was my duty as a commanding officer at the ramp ceremony to send those brave soldiers back to Canada in a flag draped coffin to go in the back of that Hercules aircraft with sometimes one, two, three, or four caskets. And the very closest friends of those fallen soldiers surrounding those caskets to say their final goodbyes and me as a commanding officer having to explain to them and look them in their eyes their tear swollen eyes eyes of a very tough and dangerous men and women just like we have in the front row here tough men and explain to them why their best friend was killed following my orders and I always said to them that as a commander over there I could pretty well stop the casualties anytime I wanted by being defensive, uh, not going on the offense, not bringing the fight to the enemy, but it wasn't what we were sent there to do. And my greatest source of pride always was, their reply was, sir, we can't have our friends, my best buddy, die in vain. So we'll continue to bring the fight to the enemy. And those losses strengthened my men's resolve to continue to fight. And it was a great source of pride for me. And it really brings it back to what we're here today. When I look at these veterans in the front row and the younger veterans who are surrounding us here, and it's really to mark those sacrifices to those men, women, airmen, soldiers, sailors, airwomen, and, and Special Forces troopers who are in those flag draped coffins. Mark their sacrifice and at the same time honor the resolve and the commitment 
of the Canadian soldier, sailor, airman, and airwoman, special forces trooper, their commitment to carry on the fight for this great nation. Thank you very much, lest we forget. I would like now to call Major General Richard Romer to deliver his remarks. General. Premier, General, Minister, Deputy Minister, honored guests and veterans, old veterans. If there are old veterans and there are new veterans, you're the senior group and you're well worthy of the attention that's being paid to you, that's for sure. Uh, I want to start simply by saying to Premier McGinty, this is his sixth appearance at this function. It's through his initiative that this wall was created. Uh, we had a big committee to put it together. The Premier said it must be done. And we put it in a position that is, I think, absolutely remarkable. And the pictures that you see really describe the history of Canada's military adventures, starting in the 1800s and going through until today. They're etched in granite. And my aircraft. Right here, it's a Mustang over the beaches of Normandy on D-Day. I was much too young to be there, but I was there anyhow. But the reality is it's all here because of Premier McGinty. And in addition to that, the Premier has, over the years, uh, carried out a ceremony which is called Tribute to the Fallen, in which he presents a special plaque to the families of uh, people who have died during the year, fundamentally, in the military, or the police, or fire. And that's been a, a, an ongoing tribute that he has paid, and I want to thank him for that, and for his great support for the military as we've seen it in this place. Uh, I think General Lavoie, his speech to you was right from the heart, from a commander in the field, who has seen what it is to go through the loss of friends and people who serve under him. A very, very difficult situation, which he had carried out from day to day for a long period of time. And we are very lucky to have him here as the Land Forces Central Area Commander. And he is he's also a great hunter, as I understand it. He's, he's a very fine, very fine leader. So we're lucky to have him here with us. I have something that was delivered to my room this morning, to my hotel, and it's a newspaper. And the newspaper is quite remarkable because it takes us back in history a long way, but it certifies that we took part in something that was a great war, the second one. It's a copy of the Daily Telegraph from London, England. This is it, it's the original paper. It cost a penny, and it's dated the London, the fourth day of September, 1939, the day war was declared. And it says, Great Britain at war, the king's message to the empire. Mr. Churchill is going to be the first lord of the admiralty again. Fierce fighting in the Polish sectors. And he has, it has the king's message to his peoples. And I'd just like to read this. I don't read very well, but if you'll bear with me. Last two paragraphs of the King's message, and you've all probably seen the message about the King and his ability to come to grips with speaking. The last two paragraphs of the King speaking, I ask them to stand calm, his people, calm, firm, and united at this time of trial. The task will be hard. There may be dark days ahead, and war can no longer be confined to the battlefield. London was going to find that out in spades when the Luftwaffe came. But we can only do the right as we see the right and reverently commit our cause to God. If one and all of us keep resolutely faithful to it, 
ready for whatever service or sacrifice it may demand, then with God's help, we shall prevail. May he bless us and keep us all. Significant newspaper came from, for some reason, today, and I thought I'd just share that, share a bit of it with you. We are here to remember, and as the general has spoken about his, his people, troops under his command, my mind goes back to our time, uh, people from my squadron who never returned, I can see them all on this day, their names and their faces, and they are very much alive. And that is what remembrance is for me. And remembrance that what we did was successful at uh, D-Day, Juno Beach, all the way through the Battle of France, up to Holland, just a very, very tough, tough fighting. And so this is the day we remember that uh, series of events tough but successful. We all came back to this magnificent city. And the magnificent city we came back to in 1945 was a one level kind of operation. The highest building in the city was the Royal York Hotel. It is now swamped with high towers which really speak to the beginning of the wealth that this country has achieved since World War II and on the backs of the people who fought that war and made good things happen here. This is a fantastic city. And we now welcome people from all over the world. We're the multicultural, multilingual, whatever. This is a fantastic place to be and a fantastic province to be in. So these are things that memories bring us on Remembrance Day. The things weren't always the way they were in 1945 in Toronto and they are certainly wonderful here now. And that's thanks to the Premier, the people who work with him, and uh, the future is very bright. So I appreciate and I'm privileged to have the opportunity to speak today. The poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below we are the dead short days ago we lived felt dawn saw sunset glow loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Those poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thank you, Reverend. Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, as the year passed from the great wars, many feel that, that the memory of sacrifice passes with it. Of course, our gathering today proves that the memory of the sacrifices made by our forefathers remains in our hearts and minds. Nous ne voulons surtout pas oublier tous les sacrifices qu'on fait nos ancêtres. This memory is also maintained by the youth of our nation and is demonstrated by the Youth Pledge of Remembrance, which will be read by Cadet Flight Sergeant Joseph D. Carolis. They served giving freely of themselves. To them we pledge amidst the winds of time to never forget and to remember them. We will remember them.
Thank you, Cadet Flight Sergeant. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now commence the laying of the wreaths. Mesdames et Messieurs, nous allons maintenant commencer le dépôt des couronnes. On behalf of the province of Ontario, the Honorable Dalton McEntry, Premier of Ontario. Au nom de la province de l'Ontario, l'Honorable Dalton McGuinty, Premier ministre de l'Ontario. des forces canadiennes, on behalf of the game forces, Brigadier General Omer Lavoy. On behalf of the Ontario Public Service, au nom de la fonction publique, Mr. Peter Wallace, the Secretary of the Cabinet and Head of the Ontario Public Service. combattants canadiens on behalf of the Canadian veterans Major General Richard Romer. On behalf of Canada's youth, au nom des jeunes Canada, three cadets will come forward, one representing the Royal Canadian Sea Cadets, one representing the Royal Canadian Army Cadets, and one representing the Royal Canadian Air Cadets. Gentlemen, I would 
like to invite the representative from foreign consulates and veterans association to come forward and lay their wreaths at the veterans memorial mesdames et messieurs j'invite maintenant les représentants des consulats et des associations des anciens combattants à déposer leur courant I would now kindly ask Come forward to deliver the benediction. Recueillons-nous pour la benediction. Anthem, followed by our national anthem, then general salute. at Queen's Park. We hope that you will join us in future years at this site on this day to remember our, and honor our nation's fallen. After the Premier and the Platform Party have left the Veterans Memorial, those of you who wish to lay a personal wreath are welcome to do so. I also invite you to place your poppy in the people's wreath, which is a large wreath in the center of the plaza. Suite au départ de notre Premier ministre et de nos dignitaires, vous pourrez déposer une couronne personnelle. Vous pouvez également déposer votre coquelicot à la couronne du peuple. I would now ask you to please stand for the departure of the platform party. Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez vous lever pour le départ de nos dignitaires. 